Cobra Kai. I'm kidding. Got Cobra Kai. Hi. Hey man, how it's are so you? nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So Got your Cobra Kai shirt on. Cobra Kai shirt. Smart boy. <laughs> well, I'm I'm also repping the Miyagi though. Uh, <laughs> I I knew you might not like that. Uh, that's all right. But hey, I have that theory that Chris will work with Daniel and John. You remember the theory? So oh, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember your theory. Yeah, you are, you're very astute on all that. Yeah, and I always tell John and Hayden and the, the creators, I always tell them how impressed I am with your perception. But I can never agree with your perception because you can't give away anything, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, you know, my son, Jesse, who, you know, was one of the guest stars in that episode where um, uh, 1965, where it's the busboy episode and you think he's me because he bullies yeah. the busboy. And... Um, yeah, we often talk about you and, and how you are such a fan of the show, you know, and you should be in this play. Oh, thank you. I mean, you yeah, <laughs> nobody knows this stuff better than you, you know? Oh, thank you. Did you go see Hayden? I saw I saw Hayden. I was like, oh, Hayden. That was, that was great. Where do you live? I'm from New Jersey. Oh, yeah, okay. Or so. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, you started this whole thing the karate kid and now like where it is now like with cobra kai and now the musical it really seems like um it's becoming star wars in a way which i know that's what the cobra kai creators said this is they wanted it to be like star wars and now you have robert came and work on the musical so what's it like seeing something that you started like expand into the, the musical and all of this well you know i i believe it's all in the written word i don't think anything like star wars the force be with you if we didn't have that and other lines, if we didn't have No Mercy, Sweep the Leg, you know, Cobra Kai Never Dies. If you don't have those lines in there to create the iconic movie, or let's just say that constitutes the classic movie, you wouldn't be talking about this 40 years later. You wouldn't have this play. It is the written word. And Robert and I talk about this all the time. He says Miyagi and Daniel uh, are... The chemistry is what made the movie successful. <laughs> I disagree with them all the time. What what makes the movie successful is the written word and the development of the characters in any movie we know. And you know, 1883, the wonderful stuff on Paramount Plus. The character development is so rich, and it's an uphill battle to get a western going. But you create a western with a great character development, with a great plot, and that, that genre can return. So, you know, Robert has done something that's just brilliant. We've now put music to a film constituted to the point of being a classic because of the writing. And it's all the writing, so it's all the writing in a play. You don't have a good writing in a play. Who's going to go night three? It's going to close. And you have good music. So I'm going to see all this tonight, and um, I'll let you know. But I'm, I'm sure... He, his game is so tough, you know, he would not satisfy, be satisfied, unless the, this, the Karate Kid, the musical, was hot. Yeah. And you spoke to Alan Green. Did you, what did you guys talk about? And what is it like seeing, basically, your character, but now someone else playing you? It's really interesting. And yet I know he's, you know, he's a dancer and he's a singer. And I wanted to audition for this piece and came and said, you can't, you're 35 years too young. And I sang to him on the phone and I said, mercy is for the weak here and on the street. I said, I know all the lines, man. I said, that, 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 that's half the battle in an audition. You have to memorize all the lines, you know. And he says, yep, 35 years too weak, forget it. Too old, forget it, you know. And, and you were on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. You, you sing, so you have dancing, you have music talent. I can dance, but the thing is, Dancing with the Stars, they wanted me to do the Pasa Doble. And be, you know, the classical, the classical approach to the flamenco. And I can rock and roll. I mean, I wanted to do splits and do all these moves and stuff. I used to dance in contests. But it's not about that. It's formal, tough, practicing four hours a day, and I couldn't do it. So it was very enjoyable to do, though. I mean, I, I really had a good time showing another side of John Kreese, which is why I did it. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to, 
you know, have only people think that John Kreese is a villain because he isn't. He's just a, which is part of what you diagnose, what you diagnose very well, is that John Kreese is a misunderstood character. Yeah. There's a vulnerability to him that might be hard to find sometimes. But the bottom line is, and we get more of it in season four and five, you know, that he is, you know, a textured, vulnerable guy. Yeah. I have one more question for you. Uh, the Cobra Kai creators, do you, if they were to like utilize your talents, like, like, would you ever, would you ever want to see John Kreese maybe dance in the series? If if it ever ended up, if there's some way of working it in. Well, I'm very much for the versatility of any actor. I would love that. That would be great. We were just talking about having a great idea. John Kreese is admitted to a, a, an asylum like Cuckoo's Nest. And then he gets all these people in there. And he realizes he's not so crazy. You know, and, and he's got to take care of all these weird weirdos. And he's you not know, that strange himself. Just He's just a misunderstood villain. And um, I think, you know, I would be right in there for that. You know, I, I'd like to see this character with a great deal of redemption in the upcoming seasons and um, you know contrary to Terry Silver who's pure evil yeah. you know my, this guy is not and this guy is tougher than Terry Silver he's you know I, I, I would fight to the death I don't think Terry Silver would fight to the death yeah. you know so we'll see and I've already saved Terry Silver's life now I know <laughs> I want to put him back in the hole yeah, yeah. Martin I, I want to thank you so much like Crease and your performance like really just have meant so much to me. I'm just a huge fan of your performance. Like anytime I see you in a scene, at, like your interviews, you just you steal the show. You remind me just of my grandpa, you know, who oh. plays you in my parodies. Like I'm just like I really appreciate what you do. Oh, it's, you're good. It's so nice. You're very you. perceptive, and you'll be a good filmmaker when you make a real movie and you do stuff and you have the budget behind you and all that. I have a lot of confidence in you. I think you're going to do very well. Just hire me for a walk-on. Oh, thank you, sir. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care, sir. I'll talk to you after. Okay, the show. I'll talk to you after.